Good evening. It's every parent's nightmare to look away for just a second and find that your young son or daughter has disappeared. A couple in Victoria, British Columbia is now living that nightmare. Their son, Michael, disappeared almost two months ago. Michael is one of many children who were abducted by strangers in the past year. But something about this case has touched Victoria and now the country in a special way. Posters with Michael's face are on display across Canada. Bill Cameron has this documentary on the search for Michael Dunahy. Quit jumping on the bed. Um, this is how you do boogie. Get off the bed. This is how you do boogie, Mom. What's the last off, image you have of it? He went off around behind the cars towards the park. You don't know if he got there or not? We didn't see him get to the park, no. So that's the last memory you have? Yeah. Michael Dunahy, born May 12, 1986, missing since March 24, 1991. I had told him uh, not to go off with the kids that were there because I didn't know whose kids, who, whose kids they were and to watch out for the cars on his way back. Because it was a Sunday. Bruce and Crystal Dunahy had brought their two children to a Victoria school football field. Four-year-old Michael disappeared. I stood up here and looked over at the park. Didn't see him. I told Crystal I can't see Michael, so I went to go look for him. He'd asked to go to a nearby playground while his mother played touch football. The playground was within sight of the field, within sight of his father and dozens of other adults. But Michael Dunahy simply disappeared. What we're doing is we're going door to door asking... Uh, All that afternoon and evening, there was a search for a little boy who had wandered away. But the next morning, that changed to a search for a little boy who had been taken away. To have a child taken by a stranger is to be struck by lightning out of a clear sky. It happens very seldom. It has never happened in Victoria before. And it did not happen this time because Michael's parents were careless. It was vicious, random, stupid chance. Those parents did absolutely nothing wrong at all. Victoria detective John Smith is coordinating the Dunahee investigation. They were just the victim of circumstances of a situation that's unfortunately a hap you know it's it's an unfortunate situation it has been almost two months now but the intensity of the search for michael dunahy is not diminishing perhaps in other cities the concern might have worn away but perhaps that's not true either because posters with michael's face are now on display in 35 cities across the country in fact something about this crime has touched people a long way away This American syndicated true crime program has appealed for help in the search for Michael Dunahy three times. Viewers told the Victoria police of 200 sightings in the U.S. Here, this woman says uh, she saw him outside a trailer park in Carrollton, Georgia, and he fits the description. Hello. Now, what did the, what did the child look like? Like, how old was the child? Georgia, California, New Jersey. And you're very positive about the identification of Michael, like you took a very good look at him? When... Not good enough. Dozens of sightings, none pan out. The Dunahees have endured two months of grief and numbing frustration. I feel like, you know, I'm the father, this is my family, and I let, how can, you know, there's nothing I can do to get my son back that I actually physically do. I get out there and there he is, grab him and bring him home. And that's going to be one of the worst feelings anybody could have not being able to protect your family, not knowing where they are. Victoria is not always as pretty as it looks. The detectives of the Victoria Police Department are well familiar with rapes and murders and the common ugliness of Canada's cities. But the abduction of Michael Dunahy is a new kind of crime here, and it calls for new methods. Were you parked here? Yeah. For example, reconvening everyone who had a car in the school parking lot that Sunday. So that was at 12.15? And running through it all again. 
who was where. Was there a vehicle here then you don't see here now? I don't remember exactly what it was. I know my view was blocked, so it would have been by something like a van or a truck with a canopy. Over there, where the cop car is. Right where the police car is? Yeah, I think so. From what I remember. Okay, and uh, it's a brown van? I don't know what color it was. Just a van? It was dark, a dark van. That's the lead. So far, the only solid lead the police are talking about. A dark-colored van or camper or pickup truck parked around here. Now, Michael's parents parked their car at the end of the lot over by the school. And that puts this dark-colored vehicle about halfway along the path that Michael would have had to take to get from his parents' car over to the playground. Nobody saw this vehicle arrive and nobody saw it leave. But it disappeared, apparently, just about the time that Michael did. It's not much to go on. It's so little, the detectives turn outside for help to an FBI unit that collects data on child abductors, tries to calculate the answer to the question that haunts Michael's parents. They can't figure out for the life of me why someone would want to take Michael. I say nine times out of ten, it's someone that you know, but I can't think of anyone that we know that would want to do this to us. And the detectives come back from their FBI visit with some new thoughts, new probabilities. Uh, what we're told now is this, this person who is responsible for this is likely very familiar with this area because of the difficulty to get in and out and the, uh, the one-way street patterns and everything. This person could quite likely have lived in the area or has hung around the area before. There's more. The FBI says the person who took Michael may not have focused on very young children before, may be primarily interested in 10 to 12-year-olds, may have taken a 4-year-old on impulse. And the 4-year-old being easy, easy control uh, was an easier target than an older male. Look back through the records for people who fit that description. Go back and talk again with everyone on the investigation list who knows the area around the public school. Do it all again. Develop some new favorites. And this other fellow has got a record uh, dating back to 89 with Sandage for sexual assault on uh, boys four to six years of age. He lives right in the area, and about a week before, he was hanging down around the area. And the day just before Michael went missing on the 23rd, okay, he was put out for um, impaired in the area. So I think he really is worth having a good look at. And that's the same guy I just talked with. Uh, I'm going to have to go make a meet with somebody. Eh? He is a member of, he's driving a, a car, but he's a member of a van club. More tips from the public every day. Uh, and I have lots of these, and this is exactly what we're looking for. New hope as new suspects come under the lens. Then the letdown, so far, every time. We feel that every single day, because this investigation has been full of a lot of highs, and it's been full of a lot of lows because we think we have the, the right answer. We think that we're on to the right track and, and it gets investigated and explained and it's not, not what we wanted, unfortunately. All right, we'll get started here, I guess. Then there is the simply loathsome, like the man who called the Dunahee house five times. We will not broadcast his voice, caught on the Dunahee answering machine, because the police are still considering charges. But this is what he said. Yes, we do. He's been murdered. Pardon me? We murdered him. Who's we? A sacrifice to the devil. Who are you? We murdered him. You're not going to get Michael back. Who are you? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You can't have Michael back. We murdered him. The man suspected of making that call is an adult drifter with no apparent connection to any religion. And to the Dunahees, that pain was momentary. The real hurt is the sight of the things of their son's life and the continuing pain of his absence. That has not stopped for two months. Go for a walk and I'm, sometimes I find myself looking back to forget Michael, but you know he's not there. I don't know if I'm out at baseball or whatever, and you, you see all the kids playing. Well, Michael would be over there playing too. It's, it's, it's hard. Cause there's so much in our life that we still do that Michael would be involved in. Yeah, everybody else's lives might go on, but ours aren't. Ours aren't. We're not going to stop until we find them. And I mean that. No way I'm giving up my son. 
He's the first and only son I'm ever going to have. And I want him back. In a donated basement room of a Canadian Legion Hall, the Michael Dunahy Search Center. Donated buttons from a donated button press. Donated flyers printed with donated money. Donated posters flowing out across the country. Endless donated hours. What I wanted to say to you as a, from one parent to another was I really understand the anguish and that he must be going through. And, and a check. Another check for the growing daily pile. Another television interview in an apparently endless stream. A colorful Vancouver entrepreneur has given the search for Michael Donaghy a tremendous boost. This morning, Murray has... News of another benefactor. Additional reward money from a football team owner and stock promoter in Vancouver. Murray Pezum's intervention adds to a sense of strangeness, of media avalanche. And we have uh, doubled the reward money. It's now 200000 in total. Since the school system has begun distributing posters of the Victoria child, half a million posters province-wide. As Canada Kate Post is getting in on the search for Michael Dunahy, it's agreed to deliver posters of Michael to every household in the Lower Mainland. Ryan and Mila Mulrooney were in Victoria a few weeks ago. They promised to do what they could in the disappearance of the four-year-old boy. And today, Mila produced a television appeal for Mr. both Donahue Michael... He says Texas investigator J.J. Arms can come to Victoria to search for Michael, but he shouldn't be paid his $100,000 fee up front. Meantime, tonight, about 100 people held a candlelight vigil featuring a song specially written for Michael. So It's been suggested to Michael Dunahy's parents that perhaps some good will come out of this tragedy it is coming already in the extraordinary binding together of the community. But why all this? Something about the abduction of this child and the pain of his family has moved a huge number of people. Why? Victoria detective John Smith says it makes us all afraid. Because we all feel vulnerable, all of us that have children. Uh, I've talked to all sorts of, of parents that uh, are having difficulty dealing with this because it affects all of us. Anything that's found, such as a bag, a box, or anything else, don't touch it with your hands. Take a stick and poke it. Look into it, but don't touch it. There is a feeling among the parties of searchers who gather in the forests that they are fighting an outside evil. We want to make it very plain that nobody comes in and takes children or abducts children from our island and we won't give up the search until uh, he's either in the hands of a policeman or in his mother's arms. But the FBI profile suggests that the man who took Michael Dunahy is probably not a passerby, not an intruder on Vancouver Island, but a resident. It's very likely it could be somebody that we already have into our system right now. We're not discounting that. Probability. We have a lot of names, but we have a lot of more names to get out there. Take a look at the Two months, and suddenly, just this week, a sense of renewal in the search, a hint that the police now feel the case can be solved. Maybe it's another mirage, maybe not. Maybe the police are only a connection or two away from a miracle. Do you think Michael's alive? Yes, I do. Why? Until we receive any evidence to the contrary, uh, we feel very strongly that uh, Michael is still with us and we're working towards his safe return. Is that faith or is that logic? That is both. It's one of those gut feelings that you, you just feel that it's, everything's going to work out all right. You've never wavered in that? No. I realize he's not going to be the same little boy, yeah. but he's not. He's, he's alive. He's just going to be need a lot of support and, and help to get him back to the way he was. It's a Nintendo set. His birthday was last Sunday. This is Bill Cameron in Victoria for the Journal.